Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Masoud Olia, and I'm a professor at Wentworth University in the School of Engineering uh, in the mechanical program. And I'm back, and this would be my actually last video for the year 2021. Today is December 31st. It's around 2.30 in the afternoon, and this would be my last video. And hopefully I'll come back with many more videos in the new year 2022. And happy new year to everybody. Uh, so this problem that I have here, and I'm sharing with you, is basically a mechanical system consisting of a rod, a slender rod, ABC, which is uh, fixed or pinned at point A here. And um, it's connected by two spring, linear spring, with different um, stiffness, 20 pound per foot. At one is uh, connected at point B and one is 10 pound per foot in terms of its stiffness at uh, point C. Uh, let's say we are given the weight of this uh, rod to be uh, 10 pound, okay? So remember, the weight is 10 pound, but the mass, you have to be careful, is 10 divided by 32.2, which whatever it's going to be, it's going to be then what we call the slugs. So it's going to be a fraction of one slug. Um, so my objective here is to show you how you can uh, determine the, the differential equation of this system if we disturb this system. Uh, in other words, if we rotate this kind of, give it, give it a, a slight rotation uh, clockwise or counterclockwise. In this case, by the way, it's shown, uh, or we want to give it you know, some disturbance of in the counterclockwise form. So like if we rotate this like five degrees and maybe give it an initial speed, initial angular velocity and let it go, what would be the natural frequency? So how would this guy oscillate? So this is basically a typical problem. And the way we can come up with the differential equation and eventually the natural frequency of the system, there are different ways that this can be done. One is the energy method and one is actually using the, uh, uh, the drawing the free body diagram of this and applying the uh, modified second law as it relates to the rotation of this rod. Now, uh, one thing that I'm going to skip here is uh, the gravity here. In other words, there would be an mg here, which is the 10 pound. But the mg, uh, maybe I'll show you in another video that that is going to be a wash in the differential equations. Uh, as you do the, the analysis. In other words, if you draw a free body diagram uh, that is you know, just looking at the equ equilibrium position, in other words, this is going to sag a little bit due to you know, uh, the weight, and then these springs are going to be deformed. Uh, and then if you come up with the relation and then, then you disturb the system, you'll see that actually the effect of gravity is gonna come up. So I'm going to uh, use the equation of motion. I'm going to take moment about A, the pivot point. And as you know that, uh, then you have to use moment of inertia I sub A. In other words, the moment of inertia through uh, point A and multiply that by alpha. And the way we're going to disturb this is as, as shown here by angle theta counterclockwise, and that's going to be a positive direction. All right, let's draw a free body diagram. So I'm going to change color and say, okay, at A we have pin reactions, AX and AY. And then we got the force of the spring at B and the force of the spring at C. But before I show you that, I wanna show you that actually, if you look at how this guy will get deformed, if we call this angle, this is a small angle theta, and let's say the angle is a small. See, this is where point B is. So point B is going to move this much up and point C is going to move this much up. And if you say, uh, and remember, this is three feet and this is five feet, right? And if you say for a small angle, tangent of the angle is the same as angle in the radians and tangent is what? Uh, opposite divided by adjacent. So in this case, it would be if I, for example, call this uh, uh, Y1, right? 
and call this y2 or y actually why don't we just call it y of b and y of c that's i think is a better choice so for if you look at y of b that would be y of b divided by three feet and that's the same as y of c divided by five feet so you see y of b in other words how much deformation we get in that spring is going to be three theta and similarly y of c would be five times theta okay so now with that in mind, let me go ahead and draw the free body diagram of this. So if we disturb this by a small angle theta, this spring is gonna be compressed. So then it pushes back with what force? K of 20 times how much disturb, uh, the formation you have, three theta. And similarly, this guy is gonna be a stretch, point C or the spring at C is gonna be a stretch. So it's pushing back in this direction. And what would be the force of the spring? 10, the stiffness times the amount of deformation, which is five theta. So basically remember that I didn't include the gravity. I mentioned at the beginning that gravity is going to come out of the, of the differential equation. Now also I sub A can be calculated based on parallel axis equation. Remember I sub A is I bar uh, centroidal mass momentum inertia, which is the axis going through G plus MD squared. So if we go ahead and try to find I sub A, now I bar is gonna be given, you have to go to a table. For a slender rod, that's 112 ML squared plus MD squared. And D is the distance between the um, uh, centroidal axis and the, the axis of rotation or where you're transferring that moment of inertia. So in this case, if you do the calculation here, be careful guys, again, the mass is uh, 10 divided by 32.2. L is five, that's a total length. And again, mass is 10 over 32.2. And D happens to be 2.5 from G to that corner. And you have to score that. I think I have the calcul done the calculation here. This comes out to be uh, I believe 2.588. And the un unit of I actually is kind of interesting is pound foot second squared or a slog feet squared, if you want to use a slog. Anyways, uh, we're ready to apply the uh, this equation, right? Sum of the moment about A equal I A alpha. Remember, this is our positive direction counterclockwise. So now as you take the moment, let me actually remove these now. I don't need this. Okay. All right, so the force of uh, the, the spring force here, uh, its moment is going to be negative as you could see. It's 20 times three theta is the force times three, be careful. That would be the moment R. And similarly, the moment of this guy is gonna be going clockwise about A, that's also, the, the force is 50 theta or 10 times five theta times five. And that is equal to this number. And what is alpha? Alpha is second derivative of theta, theta double dot. So when you clean this up, you see you get 2.588 theta double dot. So remember, our differential equation is going to be in terms of the rotation of the bar. Theta double dot, that's uh, mass moment of inertia times angular acceleration. And then you'll see we get a, a 180 here and uh, 250 here. So we get 430, I believe. If you bring them all into one, uh, one side to 430, theta equals zero. So look, this is the differential equation. And you guys have seen in, uh, in probably other videos that in a way, this is your equivalent mass or equivalent mass moment of inertia. And this is your equivalent K. So natural frequency in this case would be the square root of K equivalent over mass equivalent. And if we go ahead and do this, that was 430 divided by what? 2.588. And the frequency, the natural frequency comes out to be about 12.89 
radians per second. And if you want to, so in other words, if you run this, if you disturb this and let it oscillate this system, it will run at this frequency. And uh, if you want to calculate the period of this, period can be calculated. And I was, how many seconds does it take to go through one cycle? All you have to do is to do two pi divided by omega n. If you take two times phi and divide by 12.89, uh, the period would be about half a second, 0.48. Uh, second per cycle, actually. The two pi actually converting the radians to revolution or cycle. So in other words, if you run this, basically if this is your theta and this is your time, you would see something like this. Uh, of course, depends on what the initial condition is. But the period is this. You see peak to peak, it's gonna take half a second, roughly half a second to go through one cycle. All right, now I, I thought maybe it's a good idea for me to show you a quick uh, simulation of this. There is a, a very useful um, dynamic sim simulation software that we use in our university at Wentworth and working model when I teach dynamics or vibrations or system dynamics, I use this software along with MATLAB Simuli. And this software is called working model here. And what I did actually, I went and I generated this uh, uh, you know, uh, mechanical systems, simple mechanical systems. So I, I have a springs here that are, you see, this one has a tw uh, K of 20 and this one has a K of 10 pound per foot. The mass of this guy in, in its log is 0 0.311. It's the 10 divided by 32.2 and it's moment of inertia. This is, by the way, this number is moment of inertia with respect to the centroidal axis, the 112 ml squared. And then if I say, if I disturb this for you, uh, say, in other words, if I go ahead and give it a five degree rotation in clockwise, right? And no initial conditions, uh, no initial velocity rather, sorry. And that's good enough. And if I bring a measuring box, actually, let me do this. Let me um, uh, put this back into zero position first. Bring a measuring box for you to show you how this guy will oscillate. Uh, let me just go on the measure. And by the way, you could probably get a value, uh, evaluation version of this software. Just do a uh, Google search on uh, working model 2D and you probably be able to get uh, the software for like 10 days or an evaluation uh, one. Okay, I wanna measure position rotational graph. So this actually shows me how this bar is going to rotate uh, the, the graphical. And look, I'm going to now uh, give this that disturbance, really doesn't matter. You could pick any number you want, not too large though. And then if I run it, let me actually close this and I'm gonna run it, just show you that uh, in fact, you, that's the oscillation that you get. Let me just stop it. Look, uh, peak to peak from this point, which is pretty much like half a second. You see that right here? Two peak, that's almost what? 0.5 to one. That's about 0.5 or we had what? 0.487. So uh, I hope that you like this video. As I said, this is my last video for this. Um, year and soon I'll come back um, at the beginning of the year with more videos, more simulation, different topics, mechanics of materials, um, statics, dynamics, system dynamics, vibrations, and so on. Again, thank you, happy new year. Uh, as always, if you like the video, please uh, subscribe. That would be of, of a great help to me. It would give me more in you know, incentive to make videos for you. Thanks again, and we'll see you soon.